Young people, welcome back. Shout out to the sponsors. Shout out to the viewers. What we got today, y'all, what we got, you already know, because you looked it up. Chapter six, lesson five, skills practice. That's the handout we're doing, but what is the learning objective? Determine the best method for solving systems of equations, and objective number two, apply systems of equations. Okay. We don't do what we've been doing. We're going to solve systems and let's get to it. <laughs> and guys, the reason why I'm saying it like that as we get this down and started is um, literally this is where you're wrapping up the last three things or four things we've done. I say three because there's three methods to solving a system. Substitution, elimination, and graphing. So determine the best method to solve each system of equation then solve the system. So I get to decide. I see opposites. No, yes, maybe. If I do see opposites, I'm going to use elimination. And 5x plus 3y is equal to 16. Second equation, 3x minus 5. So I see different signs, but I don't see opposites. I don't see anything being equal to y or equal to x. So I'm just going to go ahead and use elimination by it creating opposites. Um, three times the bottom equation, but I'm also going to say five times the top equation. So sometimes you got to adjust both top and bottom, first and second equation, to make sure that you can get what you need. And what do we need here? We need opposite terms. In this case, opposite terms in the Y, so that they will cancel. Um, that's our whole goal. And if you are new to this skill, no biggie. We are going to solve for one variable at a time. So by eliminating the y term, we got 34x is equal to 68. 34 times 2, so x must equal 2. We go back to the original equation, the first one, and we're going to plug in the value of x so we can find out what y is equal to. So 5 times 2 gives us 5x. 10 plus 3y, subtract 10 from 16, 3y equals 6, y will equal 2. So the first solution, 2. two. Okay. All right. But again, guys, this lesson is about you deciding which method to use. So number two, and if it's my decision, you can decide something different. I think I'm going to stick with what I'm doing, elimination method. And why? Because look at my second term in the first equation. It's a negative 5y. And the second term in the second equation is a positive 5y. That's the super happy face, right? No adjustments needed. I see opposites. I'm going to draw my line at those two equations. Eliminate the y term. 5x is equal to 20. x is equal to 4. Chose the bottom equation because it's all addition, all positives. So 2 times 4 plus 5y is equal to 13. 8 plus 5y is equal to 13. Subtract 8 from 13, so 5y minus 5. Y is equal to 1. So again, guys, what's happening is we're doing the skill of elimination because we are deciding that I see opposites or I can make opposites. That makes it elimination method. Eliminate one of your variable terms. Uh, for 3, I automatically read y equals. Um, when we did substitution, I made the point of, it says y equals. Well, if I know what y equals, I'm going to substitute in the substitution method. y equals 3x minus 24. Second equation, 5x minus y is equal to 8. So, first thing I'm going to do is circle and put. If that's what y is equal to, I'm going to rewrite the equation I pointed to. 5x minus parentheses, thank you, is equal to 8. Inside of the parentheses is the value that I circled, 3x minus 24. And be careful, guys, there's a negative one you need to distribute because it says minus. So 5x minus 3x plus 24 equals 8. I got rid of my parentheses by distributing the negative. Um, collect by terms, 2x plus 24 equals 8. Subtract 24 from both sides. We get 2x equal to a negative 16. 
Thank you. Um, X equals negative E. And now, of course, what is Y equal to? Well, I'll tell you what Y equals. <laughs> 3X minus 24. So three parentheses minus 24. And the value that we just got is a value got negative. Negative 8 times 3 is negative 24. And of course, negative 24 minus 24, somebody's going to say 0. And that's going to be a mistake because you just saw minus 24. So you get negative 48. Excellent day. And I think we got room for another one, guys. So as I write my coordinate point, I'm going to decide for number 4. What do I want to do for 4 here? Um, looking kind of funky, looking kind of crazy. First equation, negative 11x minus 10y is equal to 17. Second equation, 5x minus 7y is equal to 15. So neither one says x equal or y equals. Um, I do see a negative in the x term and a positive in the x term. So I have different signs. So why don't I just adjust to get opposite terms? If I have opposite signs, I can get opposite terms. So I'm gonna multiply the top and the bottom by something so that I can get opposites. And there's that trick. If you remember from earlier videos we did the elimination method, just flop the coefficients. So the top one five times negative 11 gives me negative 55. And then of course five times 10 and five times 17. Um, five times 10, 7, 50, 35, 85. 50, 35, 85. We're doing it. I don't know what we're doing. There it is. It took forever. All right. Uh, 11 times 5x, 55x, and that's exactly what we wanted. 11 times negative 7, negative 7, 70. And 11 times <laughs> 50. Ooh, we got some big old numbers here. Calculator. All right. Um, go ahead and draw my line because now that I see it looks like uh, you see that negative 55x and positive 55x, it just looks like 65. But add them up, that eliminates. Um, negative and a negative it gives me more negative, so a negative 127y is equal to, and you just 550 plus 85, 635. Now, of course, how many times will 127 go into 635? I don't know, why don't we use that? Right? And of course, what do we get? <laughs> negative 5. So, but we're not done. What are we not done? Pick the top equation or the bottom equation. I'm picking the bottom. 5x minus 7y. You notice there's a parentheses where the y would be because I know what y equals. Is equal to 50. 5x plus 35 equals 50. Subtract 35 from the left and the right. And 5x now is equal to, I believe that's 15. So x equals 3. And I got just enough room right there. x value, 3. y value, Excellent thing, guys. So, again, um, solving a system of equations by elimination. We solve the system of equations by substitution. Um, we do have graphing as a third method, but again, guys, um, we're just practicing something that was earlier in this chapter. And, um, concept and skill, guys. Let's get it. So, let's get this out of here. Let's get the new stuff in here. And here we are, guys. So, First one that I look at, I see opposites. And if you don't, pause this video and you know what that opposite terms. <laughs> yeah, but you got a positive four, I'm sorry, you got a positive y and negative y just right above each other. So I can literally just draw the line, but I want to be nice and write it out for you. Four x plus y is 24. Five x minus y is equal to 12. So when I add these terms, four and five give me nine. One and negative one gave me zero, so nine x equals thirty-six x equals four. Um, if you want to deal with the negative five, I'm sorry, you want to deal with five x minus one, or do you want to deal with four x plus one? It's like I want to deal with negative one. Five times four gave me twenty. Five x. Um, went ahead and subtracted twenty from both sides. That's the first step of the two-step. One y equals negative eight. Y must equal positive. I find a solution of 4, 8. Now, if you look at 6, when you read the second equation, top equation, 
equation, 6x minus y equals negative 145. Second equation says x equals. The minute it says x equals, it diminishes your brain, my brain, anybody brain says substitution method. So I ain't even write substitution method. I'm going right into substitution method. X equals 4 minus 2y. So 6 times 4 minus 2y, parentheses close, minus the one line. Distributed property, 6 times 4 gave me 24. 6 times 2y gave me negative 12y. And of course, the negative one line came down. We're going to collect that term, so that's where the 24 minus 13y comes from. And now, guys, you're staring at a two-step. So again, we've already done multi-step equations, so it's distributed property, collect that term, you're staring at a two-step. Now that you're staring at a two-step, what you're going to do? You, of course, are going to subtract 24 from both sides. Gives you negative 13y is not equal to a negative 60. 169. Um, anybody that knows, knows 13 times 13. But um, those are squares. We've been doing squares in like chapter 11, 12, or 10. I don't know. But um, y is equal to 13, guys. Um, x equals 4 minus 2. And I don't even know why. What am I doing? Oh, solve for y. I forgot. Some of these problems get long. I gotta go back to solve for x. x equals 4 minus 2 times y, plug in the 13 for y, x is equal to 4 minus 26, x is equal to negative 22. All right, guys, and again, I always want to say, like, pause these videos, get the notes, look over them. If something doesn't make sense, just write POC next to it. Point of confusion, ask your teacher, put something in the comments. Um, this is a great uh, review, a wrap-up lesson, uh, where we're applying the methods of which to solve system equations. Oh, it's gone. All right, and if that's gone, something should be in. Ooh, love it. Word problem. A vegetable stand. A roadside vegetable stand sells pumpkins for five dollars each and squashes for three dollars each. Let's highlight our important information. One day they sold six more squash than pumpkins. That sounds like an equation. And their sales total ninety-eight dollars. As soon as I see the word total, my brain is thinking equals. So equals 98 dollars, right? Write and solve a system of equations to find how many pumpkins and squash they sold. Oh. Oh. All right, guys. So in my brain, I'm thinking I need two equations because it literally said to write and solve a system of equations. So there's my beautiful. I can teach you that. We'll make a whole video just on how to do that. First equation, well, what's our two totals? Well, first thing I want to say is y is equal to 6 plus x. And you know where that comes from? It comes from 1. One thing is y and another thing is x. Well, let's go back and read this. So, 6 more squash than pumpkins. So you sold six more squash than pumpkins. Six more squash than pumpkins. You know what that's telling me? It's telling me that something represents pumpkins, something represents squash. Now you can swap them. I mean, X could be pumpkins, or Y could be squash, or Y could be, but this is what I'm saying, right? I'm saying X is squash because six more pumpkins. So six more pumpkins. If I had 10 pumpkins, six more than 10 would be 16. All right? So I don't know how many pumpkins. I don't even know how many squash, but I know six more. So I add six to X. Um, the second one is much easier, though, because they're telling you $5 each. One, five times the squash. And that's why five is, you know, X is squash. It matches, right? Um, we're going to use substitution method because 5x plus 3y, that's where the total came from. $98 total because 5 for each pumpkin, 3 for each squash. And I'm going to circle what y equals, point it to the y, rewrite the equation that I pointed to, 5x plus 3 parentheses equals 98. And why? Because now you're going to see, I plug in what I circle, going back to the substitution method, 
3 times 6 is 18, 3 times x is x, so 5x plus 18 plus 3x equals 98. Collect like like terms. I'm not even underlining like terms anymore, guys. That was way back in chapter 1 or 2, right? Um, yeah, solved it. Sorry. Turn to you with me. Forgot to finish the problem, right? But are we done? No, we only have one variable, but it's easy when it's substitution because it says y equals. So y equals 6 plus x. Y equals 6 plus 10. And it's funny I said 10 earlier. Y'all think I'm playing. I ain't playing with y'all. Actually, I do play a lot. But work hard, play hard. So that's why we're here. We're working hard. I hope you can play hard when you're done with this. And um, guys, we're going to be done real soon. But um, got a final answer. I didn't box anything, but I found out hopefully what I need to find out. Um, looks like we got a nice one here in income. I love it. Real world. People love money. Romeo earns $20 per hour during the week and $30 per hour for overtime on weekends. Gotta love weekends. These numbers. One week, <laughs> I want to see nothing in the chat. One week, Romero earned a total of $650. So when I see total again, I'm thinking it equals, right? He worked five times as many hours during the week as he did on the weekend. There's that operation that tells me it's going to go in the equation. Write and solve the system of equations to determine how many hours he of uh, overtime or more works on the weekend. So they want to know the overtime. Okay. Sometimes you want to highlight the question because we've got a lot going on in the paragraph or in the words. But for us guys, again, if it's a system, there's two equations. There's an X and a Y. There's a there's an M and an N. There's got to be two. So in this situation, I'm going to say you earn twenty dollars and you earn thirty dollars. Those are my two different variables. Twenty dollars per hour and thirty dollars per hour, but you got a total of six hundred fifty dollars. I don't know how many hours during the week. I don't know how many hours on the weekend, but I know the total six hundred fifty dollars. And guess what? It tells me. What x equals? And you say, what? Well, x is equal to the weekend. And it says right there. Where does it say that? Where does it say that? He works five times as many hours during the week as he did on the weekend. So five times as many hours. So multiply by five. Circle and point again, guys. I didn't circle and I didn't point, but if I know x equals then 20 times x, I'll get 5y. Plus 30y equals 650, and it's 100y plus 30y. And guys, what's cool about this is now that I know I'm dealing with real world situations, money definitely is a fraction. It's called change. $2.50 is two and a half, right? So, and even hours, there's half of an hour, there's three quarters of an hour. But I get a solid integer whole number for y, y equals five. And then, of course, I can live with that because now 5 times 5 is 25. So, I got a value for x and I got a value for y. I'll translate that into a sentence or I'll just move it out of here, hang it fast, and move on to basketball. Because, okay, apparently, I wanted to move on to basketball. There we go, guys. Uh, basketball. Anaya makes 14 baskets during her game. Sounds like a total to me. Some of these baskets were worth two points and others were worth three points. Makes sense. And it makes sense that she made 14 baskets. It needs to be a two pointer or a three pointer. So X represents two points, three represents. X represents a two pointer, Y represents a three pointer. That's why two times X plus three times Y is equal to the total amount of points that she has. She had 30 points. It's a pretty good game. But I don't see it say Y equals. I don't see it say X equals. So what am I doing, guys? I'm using elimination and I'm adjusting. I'm so quick with it. I could just make that x negative 2x. It's going to make the y negative 2y. It's going to make the 14 negative 28. I multiplied the whole entire first equation by negative 2. Didn't change the bottom equation, so now I have elimination done with the first term. So it gave me negative 2y, 3y, which is the 1y. Go back to your original, x plus y equals 14. If x is what I'm trying to find out, then plug in for y. You have to plug in for y because 
you saw before. And what plus two gives you 14? Oh, now I want to put a sentence. I have a rule in class. If they ask me in words, I need to answer in words. So that's why I'm getting on myself about the last problem where I just left it as a coordinate point because I could have specifically stated what they were asking in the last sentence. But I did not. But I'm still going to be an awesome person making these videos. Boom! She made 12 shots. Not shots. Shots. I hope I don't get in trouble for that. Thanks for coming, guys. See you in the next video.